In this video, we're going to be discussing the concept of biliary atresia. Now, this isn't something you have to memorize. We can just look at these words and try to figure it out. So, biliary, meaning this is something related to the biliary system, and then atresia, so something that's like not formed properly or was never uh, there to begin with. So, first of all, we should know that this is a congenital problem. And second, we should know that this is a process that's affecting the extra hepatic biliary tree. Now it can either happen just because you're born that way or it's because you may have had it normally when you were born but then you had some kind of infection or some kind of other pathology like an autoimmune pathology that broke down the biliary tree. So the first thing to note is the symptoms typically present within two months. What you're actually going to see is jaundice. Now why are you going to see jaundice? Now let's just take a step back and talk about bilirubin really quickly. Uh, now, as you know, bilirubin is a major component of bile. And what happens normally in the body is that blood will go to the liver and there's certain components of the blood that are going to be modified by the liver. One of those is bilirubin. Bilirubin is a normal component in blood. If it's really high, it can be an issue, but there's always a little bit of bilirubin and it represents basically breakdown or recycling of components of red blood cells. Anyways, you have blood that's bringing in bilirubin to the liver. The liver conjugates the bilirubin, and then we have conjugated bilirubin. And when we say conjugated, we're just saying that the liver is modifying the bilirubin so that the body is able to get rid of it in a safe way. Now, if we have a problem right here, which let's call this portion the extrahepatic biliary system, then we're going to get jaundice because we have too much bilirubin. So the patient's going to have jaundice, but the patient's going to have an elevated conjugated bilirubin level. Now, why am I stressing conjugated versus non-conjugated bilirubin? During exams, the way that you're going to differentiate between pathologies is lab values a lot of times. And so it's important to understand kind of the physiology so you can distinguish where the problem is. If you have jaundice and you have really high conjugated bilirubin, then you know the liver is not the issue because the liver is conjugating the bilirubin. If you have jaundice and you have a high total bilirubin, but you have low conjugated bilirubin, then you can say, okay, maybe there's an issue with the liver because we have a lot of bilirubin, but none of it is conjugated. And eventually what can happen is cirrhosis. The idea here is that there's so much pressure being built up. It's like if you uh, put your finger at the end of a hose and there's a lot of pressure getting backed up to the liver, all of that pressure is damaging to the cells of the liver. And so you'll have a pattern of cirrhosis. So that's really all you need to know. And we'll do a quick review, biliary atresia, the absence of extrahepatic biliary tree. Symptoms happen kind of right away in a newborn. You know, it's congenital. You get jaundice and you can get uh, liver cirrhosis. Guys, please do me a favor and like this video if you thought I did a good job and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I promise to keep all of these videos free. That's the only thing I ask from you is to like and subscribe. Thank you.